Welcome into the Cowboys Report, presented today by Magic Spoon Cereal. You can get $5 off this incredibly tasty and off-the-charts healthy cereal when you head over to magicspoon.com slash cowboys. Joining us today for some news and rumors updates is NFL Network's Jane Slater. Jane, thanks again for coming on. Good to see you. Did you get a little bit of rest during the bye I week? I did get a little bit of rest. It was nice to not have to worry about the Cowboys <laughs> winning or losing. Although I think they won the bye in the end, given the, the time off that Dak Prescott had, which that's where we'll start today because I know so many Cowboys fans at least just a little bit anxious about where things sit with Dak. What's the latest? I do know he's out of the boot as well. He is out of the boot. Uh, I wasn't at practice yesterday, but reporters were. And, of course, when he came outside, he sort of toyed with them a bit, said he wasn't going to give them an update, but he wasn't wearing the boot. And after looking at social media, his girlfriend posted a photo from the weekend. He was wearing, you know, his Air Jordans as part of his costume. He was a circus leader. Or what do you call it? Ringmaster? Ringleader. Or something. Uh, ringleader. Yeah. But he looked just fine. And look, I circled back with my sources. They didn't mm -hmm. seem all that concerned about it last week. Mm -hmm. And they seem even less concerned about it today. And even Jerry Jones saying as much on 105.3 The Fan, he was more concerned about the shoulder than he is this calf. Uh, but looks like he's going to be good to go. I like that line by Jerry, by the way, to mention the injury that's fine now. Oh, I was more worried about that one than I am now. That's some, that's some smart marketing right there. That's a very good thing, of course, for the Cowboys, because I am of the mindset this Vikings game coming up is probably one of the top five or top four toughest matchups left on the schedule for Dallas. They do need Dak out there if they're going to find a way to win that game. Especially when you consider their offense and how efficient it can be. I mean, Kirk Cousins, you don't typically talk about Kirk Cousins in the top five quarterback uh, conversation, but he's only thrown, what, two picks this season so far. He's really good when you put the ball in his hands at the end of the game. And then you've got threats like Dalvin Cook. You've got Adam Thielen and even that kid, K.J. Osborne, who had the walk-off touchdown uh, last weekend against Carolina. So they had, of course, the bye week, so the week before that. Uh, but they definitely have some threats there on offense. And so I think that you're going to see, you know, a high-scoring game on both sides. That works well for the Cardiac Cowboys, as yeah, I does. continue to call them, because they so often play those close games. But Prescott's been incredible this year. He is among the, the favorites right now to win NFL MVP. So I'm curious what you guys have to say here. What is your confidence level right now in Dak Prescott? Rate this for me on a scale of 1 to 100. Of course, 1 on the low end, 100 on the high end. This is going to be the pinned comment, actually, on today's video. So get the ad break here on YouTube. Scroll on down and let me know. Should have said let us know. Anyway, let's go to Lael Collins then, Jen. I know you've been working the phone lines here. I've been under the assumption, oh, he'll, he'll start, right? Is he going to? Yeah, this is a fascinating one. Uh, I know the Cowboys weren't exactly thrilled with the fact, you know, we talked about this in one of our earlier episodes. Mm -hmm. Last year, he didn't come to camp in the best shape. The next thing you know, uh, he is having season-ending surgery. Uh, this year, he comes back. We learned that he bribed uh, testing administrator as related to the drug program. Uh, the Cowboys were busy fighting that one in court. They ultimately didn't win that one. And now he is eligible to be activated on the roster. Fascinating if he does play in this Minnesota game because we haven't seen this starting group at all this season. I mean, Zach Martin had COVID, you know, week one. And then, of course, you lost Zach Martin that following week. Terrence still has done an admirable job there. But do they get him right back in the lineup? Do they tell us it's a conditioning thing? Do they send a message? Hard to say. I do, do think, though, that in terms of this offensive line versus this Minnesota defense, who is much improved from last season when the Cowboys faced them, of course, got the win with Andy Dalton, uh, they're going to need all hands on deck. So maybe we see a little rotation there. Depth would not be bad, especially when you consider Tyron Smith and some of these things that keep popping up with him at 31 years of age. Uh, at least on the minimum, the bright side is that Terrence Steele has been a, a very pleasant surprise from Dallas. I mean, when we, when we first got the news of Collins going down, we talked about Steele on this show, and you and Duke were very much right on him. <laughs> Well, I appreciate that. And the Cowboys were, of course, <laughs> right as well. So it's a very – well, I'm very curious to see how this week of practice goes for Leo Collins. Is, is there concern about the conditioning side of it? Hard to say. Uh, we will get a look at practice tomorrow. Of course, we're expecting rain, so it will likely be indoors. But we'll have a better sense of that on Wednesday. Uh, that is going to be one of the position groups I'm going to be keeping an eye on, though, Tom. Well, pick a right tackle, everyone watching right now for me in the comment section. For us, I've done that twice now. TS for Terrence Steele. 
LC for Lael Collins. Who do you guys want? Let me know what you're thinking down there in the comments right now. Let's look then at Magic Spoon Cereal, the best tasting healthy cereal out there on the market. $5 off your first order when you head over to magicspoon.com slash cowboys. An incredible selection available for you guys from the frosted, the blueberry, the cocoa, the cinnamon, and so many more flavors available as well. So check the comment section and the description as well. I put that link in there for you guys to make your lives just a little bit easier. Magic Spoon dot com slash cowboys it's five dollars off your first order to help me cut a little bit of weight as well as i get ready for the baby to come when i definitely won't be working out not that i do anyway anyway five dollars off your first order magicspoon.com slash cowboys let's move to some more injury notes here players designated to return from ir there's a 21 day practice window for michael gallup and others will get to here in a little bit so gallup could play this week, but he doesn't have to be activated quite yet. Where does he stand on that calf injury? I was told look closer to the following week. So in other words, the Cowboys play at home against the Broncos on the 7th. That makes a little bit more sense, according to some folks that I've talked to inside the building. And why rush him back? Right now, you do have sort of an embarrassment of riches as it relates to the depth at wide receiver. You've got Cedric Wilson, who's done a really great job stepping in uh, in the absence of Michael Gallup. You've got CeeDee Lamb, who had a hell of a game for the Cowboys and helped get him the win last week. Amari uh, Cooper, Noah Brown. Uh, so I would just ease this one in. And I don't want people talking to me about trading Michael Gallup. Let me just put that to bed. Not going to happen. I, I was going to ask about the concern around Gallup, if the, the timetable for the recovery. I think it's been a bit longer than what they at least initially had said and speculated, but, I mean, they're 5-1. and one, so. I mean, we were talking about six to eight weeks, mm -hmm. right? So we're, we're kind of in the window there. I guess that's not all bad. And as you mentioned, Cedric Wilson has been so good, plus Tony Pollard, Zeke Elliott, Blake, Dar Blake Jarwin, Dalton Schultz. There are plenty of options there for Dallas, although I, I do But if think, you're Michael Gallup, yes. this is a contract year, yes. you want to get the stats, you want mm. the touchdowns, you want to build and bolster your resume. What I love about him is how selfless he is. Mm. This is a guy that doesn't really concern himself with the money. I even had a conversation with him once. Man, you need to start knowing your worth. You know, You need to start getting it out there that you would leave this team. I get the sense this guy, and he's not going to want me to say this, he hasn't said this directly, but I get the sense he's the type of guy that loves Dallas so much, he's maybe not going to ask for the sun and the moon. Maybe this is the guy that gives you a little closer to hometown discount. His agent's going to reach out to me and say, stop with that talk. I want to see the guy get paid. But, yeah, I think he really likes being in Dallas, and they like having him in Dallas. Some good little inside info there from Jane. And if you were paying attention, seems like you know the answer, or at least have a good guess on this one. So head down to the comments. You'll see questions, by the way, from the, the channel account asking all the questions we get. Reply right there. Will Michael Gallup play this week? Why for yes and for no. More injury notes. Tristan Hill, who I think has kind of become the forgotten man a little bit, maybe intentional by some. He's now been a, back at practice from the pup list. What's the, the latest on his timeline? Tristan Hill is a tricky one, right? This was a Rod Marinelli project uh, leading up to the draft. There was a lot of discussion about how he sat in the lobby. I think it was his birthday ahead of the draft, and Rod and him really connected. But then there were some problems with immaturity uh, in his first year. Now, last year, he worked out with uh, defensive line coach Brandon Tucker in the offseason, and he had said how improved he had been, and he'd really started to respond to the new coaching staff. So we started to see a little bit from him here, but I got to tell you, Neville Gallimore has done such an impressive job that's Neville Gallimore's job when he comes back. Tristan Hill, I could see some rotation, and I could see Dan Quinn giving him an opportunity to shine, not dissimilar from what we saw with Randy Gregory. In, order, in other words, how can we start scheming up to play to some of these player strengths, and maybe that would help a guy uh, like Tristan Hill come along. But, I mean, when you look at a guy like Osa, he has really stood out for you this year. They've gotten really, really lucky, but you can never have enough, de enough depth I just don't think that we're going to immediately see a plug and play with Tristan Hill. I'm very curious, and maybe you have some insight here, what the Cowboys' plan is going to be at, at defensive tackle with two guys coming back from injury. And across the roster, I know Jerry's hinted at this. We've talked about it before. There's some roster management hoops to jump through. 
coming up here. There are because you've got to decide who you're going to activate, who you're going to keep on on your roster. But yeah, I mean, I do think that they like the flexibility. I know that they love rotating those defensive tackles out. It allows Dan Quinn to get even more creative. Uh, you know, they sort of talk about him as like a mad scientist every week. And I've really Im been impressed with Aiden Dirty, the new defensive line coach and what he's been able to do. So we haven't seen a lot of these guys. It'll be interesting to see how they start using them and utilizing them. Depth is a good thing if you're looking to make a push, though, in the postseason. Well, as news begins to trickle out about what roster moves the Cowboys will make and everything else around Dallas with the NFL trade deadline literally just around the corner, hit that big red button and subscribe for free daily videos right here on the Cowboys Report. If you're watching somewhere else, Facebook, Twitter, whatever, it's youtube.com slash Cowboys TV. Yeah, Jane's right, right there at the bottom of the screen. White here, you know? Subscribe right now. We won't spend too much time on this one here, but Francis Bernard, which I was a bit surprised they designated him to return as well. Well, I think when you look at Minnesota, especially George Edwards, who you know was in Minnesota for years, he knows the importance of linebacker play, especially with a guy like Dalvin Cook. Uh, to peel the curtain back even ahead of this show, I said to you, have the Cowboys actually allowed a 100-yard runner this season? They've done it once. He went just a little bit over, and I won't steal your thunder. You've got the name on that one. Damian Harris. There you go. But Dalvin Cook is not to be trifled with. He had a touchdown last week on 33 carries, what, 147 yards, I think is what I had in my notes. Uh, so this is one of the tougher guys to bring down. I think you're going to see them get real creative with their linebacker play this week to really isolate him and, and do their best to minimize the damage that he can do. But look what they were able to do against the Tampa Bay Bucks mm -hmm. and their running game in week one. So that should give you... Some optimism. Yeah. Uh, I want to go rapid fire here on some of the other injuries. Yeah. Neville Gallimore, Tank Lawrence, any updates on when those guys might be be back? Neville Gallimore seems still a little little ways away. I uh, checked in on Demarcus Lawrence this morning. Sounds like maybe you could pencil him against the Falcons. Uh, so still a couple of weeks away on him. But how fun is it going to be to get all of these guys back from injury? And then pending guys stay healthy, uh, you know, we've sort of talked about this Cowboy schedule. The toughest stretch was what they've already been behind. I don't really see, you know, you've got Saints coming up. You've got the Raiders. Uh, you've got the Broncos. The Vikings might be their toughest one left. Then I, I think they've got some real manageable wins looking ahead on the schedule. I, I completely agree. Now, speaking of the schedule, the NFL trade deadline is just a week away. So I'm, gonna, I'm very curious what you have to say, even though I, I think I know the answer here. But I want your guys' votes first. Will the Cowboys make a trade this year before the deadline? One for yes, zero for no. Now, Jan, I know that the, the, the standard answers are always open for business. Right. Are you telling me there's a chance or not? Look, when teams are trying to make a push, they want to win now. So they're adding a piece that's going to help them win now. I guess my question back to you, Tom, is what would be a position that you'd absolutely want to give up something for when we look at some of these younger guys that are coming back and the play that they've gotten from guys that they literally gave a bag of chips for? Uh, so I just, it's not the cowboy way. I spent several years with the NFL Network on this beat, talking people off the Jamal Adams trade talk uh give me another earl, earl thomas, thomas was exhausting yeah. uh but i just don't see them going out and getting any guy people always forget you've got to give up something then acquire the contract and then redo that contract with a lot of these guys and so i just don't see it making sense right now um but if you've got a couple of guys i'd be happy to shoot them down for you all right i'm just telling you right now based on people i've talked to you don't see it happening. Looking forward to being told here. I'll, I'll, I'll mention two names. Okay. Quinnen Williams of the Jets, who I love. I'm assuming no there. Mm. Yeah, because the, the Jets aren't that stupid, right? No. Yeah, okay. Kyle Fuller of the Broncos, the corner. Don't see it. Yeah, because they're going to get Kelvin Joseph back soon, right? <sighs> I, oh. I don't know what to make of that guy yet. Oh, okay. You know? Yeah. He was a... Bit if he puts ball. as much passion I, I, I on the football field as he puts into his rap career, he could really be something. I just don't know what to make of him. Okay. 
Interesting. Interesting. Well, I'm sure we'll see soon here in a little bit on Kelvin Joseph, since in theory he'll be back at some point in the near future. Remember, folks, if you want more Cowboys videos, hit that big red button and subscribe right now from both Jane and myself. I don't know why I pointed to me when I said Jane. That was very weird. I'm off today for whatever reason. It's Either Freaky way, Friday. It is. That's true. All right. Free videos here. Hit that big red button on the Dallas Cowboys report.